We present Tony Hancock, Sidney James, Bill Kerr, Hattie Jakes, and Kenneth Williams in Hancock's Half Hour. <laughs> arguing I've made up my mind I'm going to emigrate it's no use trying to stop me who's trying to stop you <laughs> oh oh I see that's the way things are shaping is it yes well you can think again I've no doubt as soon as the word gets round the dominions that I intend to emigrate they'll all leave the commonwealth they'll all <laughs> they will not all leave the commonwealth they will queue up to get first refusal. <laughs> Man of my culture would be a great asset to any country. How do you think America became great? They took the best brains of Europe. Well, I intend to go to the Commonwealth and even things up a bit. <laughs> Long live the Empire! Listen to him, little Lord Beaverbrook. <laughs> As a matter of interest, why exactly have you decided to emigrate? Several reasons. There's no incentive to get on in this country anymore. There's no future for a man of my intellect. Only by emigrating to a land of progress can we... youngsters... <laughs> spread our wings and go forward. We're being held back in this country, I'll tell you that. That's for free and for nothing. Our initiative is being shackled. We must throw off the chains. And march forward to the broader horizons that are awaiting us. <laughs> yes. And they're the reasons you're leaving. Yes. Mm. It's got nothing to do with the two red caps who called here last week. <laughs> you remember when you hid under the table, shaking with fear? I don't know what you're talking about. Those gentlemen obviously had the wrong address. Then why did you spend the next three days in the water tank up in the loft? <laughs> I was looking for a leak. You were not. You had a mattress up there and six months' supply of tin food. <laughs> and now you emerge wearing dark glasses and a false beard and you say you're leaving the country. And you expect me to believe all this twaddle about no incentive and being shackled. Well, I would have been shackled. <laughs> oh, so they were after you. Only on a technical point. I was discharged honourably. I wasn't a deserter, if that's what you're thinking. <laughs> Fine record I had as me discharge papers will prove. Where are they? I flogged them. <laughs> That's the technical point I was talking about. <laughs> the great patriot sold his discharge papers. Well, I didn't know it wasn't allowed. They were mine. I worked hard for them. Three years of limping about the parade ground. <laughs> Tying bits of string round my legs so as my veins would stand out. <laughs> And that's left its mark, I may add. <laughs> they won't go back now. <laughs> I think I'm entitled to emigrate after all I've been through. Have you decided which country you're going to honour with your presence? No, 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 I'm open to suggestions. Russia? <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Yes, I could settle in St. Petersburg. They call it Leningrad these days. I don't. <laughs> and I'm sure the Tsar doesn't either. <laughs> no, no, I think it'll have to be the Commonwealth. Get me school atlas out. Let's have a look at all those pink bits. <laughs> now, that's it. There. Now, I'll close my eyes, stick a pin in, and that's where I'll settle. Round she goes. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. There. Hmm. And what sort of a living do you expect to make in Baffin land? <laughs> well, it's only 300 miles inside the Arctic Circle. The Eskimos don't have any bother. They're making a fortune up there. Never see them without a fur coat on. <laughs> kids as well, kids as well. They've all got them. There's money up there, I tell you. Selling ice to Tom Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 
Yes, it's Baffin land for me. The only white man up there. King of the penguins. Oh, rubbish. You wouldn't last two days in that weather. Look at you now. Three overcoats, four string vests, and a pair of galoshes. And you're still in bed. <laughs> so I am. I'd forgotten about that. Good morning, everybody. Do I smell breakfast? Oh, so you're the bulge at the foot of the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Too right. Tub likes me to keep his feet warm since we got rid of the dog. Boy, it sure is a humdinger of a day. That's it. Of course. Australia. What about Australia? I'm going to emigrate to Australia. Oh, great. I'll come with you. I'll... Uh, no, I better not. <laughs> Isn't it marvellous? One's got to leave a country and the other one can't go back. <laughs> I can go back. I can go any time I want to. I just don't fancy swimming the last three miles at night time. <laughs> what are you going to Australia for, Tub? I am emigrating, William. I'm going to carve a new life for myself. Do you recommend Australia? Ah, yeah, it's a great country tub, full of youth, vim, vigor, energy, work hard and play hard. Always on the go, get things done, bags a zip. Why did you leave? By the time I was 12, I was exhausted. <laughs> yes. Yes, Australia. That's the place for me. I'll do well out there, all that zip and all that stuff. Oh, striding out into the bush with me billabong chucked over my shoulder. <laughs> Yes, me swag man flapping in the breeze. <laughs> me tucker bag bulging with boomerang. Yes, I can see it now. Sadding up me kangaroo and leaping forward into the night. <laughs> Digging up nuggets with me jumbuck and... <laughs> Rock and rolling Matilda on Bondi Beach. Oh, sensational. Tub, are we talking about the same country? <laughs> of course we are. Australia. Ships rough at his place, you know. <laughs> How do I get out there? Well, you've got to apply to Australia House. Hey, why don't you go down there today? They'll, they'll give you all the gym. <laughs> there we are, Tub, Australia House. Gateway to the Strand. <laughs> I suppose that's the Australian flag up there with the six stars on it. Yeah. What do they represent? Uh, me, Dick Bentley, Peter Finch, Shirley Abercare, Joy Nichols and Kitty Blewett. <laughs> yes, that's another reason I'm going. Not a mention of me on the Union Jack. <laughs> it's not good enough, is it? Frankly, no, 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 it isn't. It's not good enough. You coming in with me? Uh, well, no, I, I don't think I'd go. Oh, go on, me. turn your coat up, pull your hat down. They won't recognise you. <laughs> Come on. Uh, where do I go, Bill? Uh, have a chat with a fella on the immigration desk. There's nobody there. Well, that shows you how popular it is. Even he's gone. <laughs> no, 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 I can see him. There he is under the bush hat. Right. Now, now, give him a good impression. Remember, he's Australian and it's his job to see that no undesirables get into his country. He only wants people who he thinks will make good Australians. That's all right. Leave it to me. <laughs> and hiya, Digger. I just heard from a heap of coke and old copper of mine that this Aussie place is fair dinker for an old pommy like me. <laughs> Straight from Birmingham. <laughs> Now, if you'll all be good enough to give me the details, you'll be right, matey. Good on you, Bluey Hoots, Mon, and Wacko Ned Kelly. Are you taking the mickey? <laughs> well, now, cobble me old beaut, do you mind? Now, be quick, what can I do for you? I want to go to Australia. Why? <laughs> because it's a dilly of <laughs> I can't wait to get out on Bondi Beach with me bailers on. I think we'd better fill up this application form first. Name? Hancock. What is your trade? I'm a comedian. Yes, well, what do you do for a living? I'm a travelling knife grinder. If you've got any scissors you want to do them before I go, I'm only too happy to apply. Yes, thank you, thank you, most kind. I got a comedian. What medium? Mrs. Claire Riggins, clairvoyant, every Tuesday, 8 o'clock. No, 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 no. I mean, what branch of entertainment? Oh, radio. Oh, have you a sponsor? No, no, it's BBC. I, I mean, is there anybody in Australia who can vouch for you, guarantee that you'll be a desirable citizen? 
Yes, yes, the, the, the well-known Kerr family of Wagga Wagga. Oh. <laughs> I look them up. K, Wagga Wagga. K, Kelly. Crint. Ah, Kerr. <laughs> that's, that's strange. There's nothing about the Kerr family here at all, except for a few leaflets here. Oh, yes. The total reward money is 30,000. <laughs> Do you know anybody else? No. Have you tried Canada? <laughs> I don't know anybody in Canada. In your case, that could be an advantage. <laughs> I want to go to Australia. I refuse to be fobbed off like this. I know my rights. You can't stop me going to Australia. I'll get Mr. Menzies onto you, Mush. <laughs> Australia I want to go to, and to Australia I am again. So you can wrap that round your boomerang and sling it. <laughs> Yes, partner, I figure Canada's the place for a critter like me. I'll set them bar traps round about Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. <laughs> Up there in the backwoods, yeah, the frozen door. I reckon we might track it a yellow knife occasionally and chew back it with the engines, you all, yowza. Do you mind? <laughs> now, what can I do for you? I wish to emigrate to Canada. You can't just come into Canada House wearing a Davy Crockett hat and tennis rackets on your feet and swinging a great axe around your head and expect to go to Canada just like that. Well, that's how they dress out there. You're talking to a man who saw Rosemary and MacDonald of the Mounties seven times. <laughs> I know it all, matey. A born lumberjack me. I'll be unblocking those rivers and jumping about those logs in me educated boots. <laughs> Nipping up and down them big trees like they hit the bell machines in the fairground. <laughs> I'm young man. It's the frozen north for me. <laughs> All right, Nanook. The <laughs> Supposing we take a few details. Name. Tony Hancock. Have you tried Australia? <laughs> yes. South Africa. No. Good day. <laughs> So there it is, my old Springbok. I think I'd make a good voor trekker up on the old Sarah Murray, round the old sugar bush there, up on the Rand, in the outback on top of Table Mountain, and three cheers for Eve Boswell. Have you tried Australia? Yes. Canada? Yes. India? <laughs> Sahib, no, thank you very much. We got problems of our own. Try somewhere else, please. <laughs> but you must take me, please. You must. Now, I'm sorry. We don't take immigrants in that land. I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> Have a penguin. <laughs> no, thank you. Have you tried Egypt? Thank you. <laughs> Keep me in this country. I demand to go abroad. You can't keep me here against me will. I demand freedom of travel. Votes for women. Votes for women. You mind, madam? This is my stretcher railings. <laughs> Chain yourself up somewhere else. I demand my rights. Baldwin must go. All right, all right, all right. Move along there. Come along there. Stop blocking up the pavements. Get your great. I wish to see the. I wish to see the Prime Minister. Do you wish me to belay your head with a series of heavy blows from my truncheon? <laughs> All right, but you haven't heard the last of me. The tall puddle martyrs will rise again. You'll get your head in a puddle in a minute. <laughs> now move along like a good little agitator. Votes for women! Oh, shut up. It is Sid, I can't emigrate. 83 countries I've tried and none of them want me. Leave it to me, Tony boy. 
I'll get you out of the country. I'm a specialist in getting people out of the country. That's what I heard. Well, that's why I've come to you. Mind you, Sid, I want this on the up and up. I want to emigrate all legal and above board. Of course you do. It's the only way I do business. Now, you give me 50 nickel for a passport. I've already got a passport. That's no good. You tried emigrating under your own name, didn't you? Use this passport. This will get you out. Oh, yeah, thanks. Let's have a look. Harold Macmillan. <laughs> Harold Macmillan? Who's he? <laughs> Never mind who Harold Macmillan is. Take it from me. You'll be able to go anywhere in the world on this passport. Now put this moustache on and nip down to the photographer's. Wait a minute, wait a minute. It says here, occupation PM. That's right. PM, postman. <laughs> I must say, he gets around a bit for a postman, doesn't he? Look at all these different countries. He's been delivering letters everywhere. I wouldn't like to have his feet. <laughs> See, it says here, the bearer has got diplomatic immunity. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, well you've got to have that for travelling in hot countries. Diplomatic immunity? Yes. It means that you've been immunized against catching diplomat. <laughs> oh, I am glad. I am glad. It's very nasty, that, you know. A touch of that and you're finished, you know. Just... <laughs> like that. Go on. Yeah. Well, you better get your hair dyed grey, buy a black coat, striped trousers, eat and tie, be down at London Airport two o'clock. There's a plane leaves for Washington, three o'clock. I'll go and get the seats booked. See you at the end. Will passengers for BOAC, flight number 173, to Washington go to the assembly hall for customs clearance? Thank you. <laughs> Hey, look, Sid, how much longer have I got to walk around with a scarf around my face? Look, you insisted on coming, didn't you? Yeah. You haven't got a passport of your own, have you? No. Well, be thankful I managed to rush one through at the last minute. And if anybody asks you who you are... I know, I know. Some geezer called Selwyn Lloyd. <laughs> Come on over to the customs and watch it. Ah, oh, good afternoon, gentlemen. May I see your passports? Certainly, my man. Thank you, sir. Harold... Ma I beg your pardon, sir. I didn't recognize you, sir. You, of course, can go straight through it. No need to examine your luggage, is there? <laughs> I mean, after all, you wouldn't be smuggling anything out, would you? <laughs> oh, blimey, I never thought of that. Uh, may I see your passport, sir? Uh, my name's Selwood Lloyd, Cobber. Of course, I didn't recognise you, sir. The cartoonists haven't quite got you yet, have they? Uh, this is, a, this is um, a secret visit, I suppose, sir. We had no official notification of your intending departure. Otherwise, we'd have made special arrangements for you. Oh, that's all right. Don't worry about it, Mush. Come on, come on, come on. Get on the plane. Stop yapping. Well, uh, I hope you get on well in America, sir. Oh, I expect I shall. I hear even the dustmen are very well paid out there. <laughs> Good heavens, who'd have thought things were as bad as that? <laughs> Come on, you two. Now listen, trouble. What? The word's got round at your ear. Look, waiting by the plane. Newspaper reporters, hundreds of them. Now, I know you actors like lording it up, but don't say one single word to them. Oh, don't be so ridiculous, Sidney. I it's you. obvious why they're here. I They've seen through me disguise. Do me a favour. They've recognised me. Of course I must speak to them. Look, I it's know... It's not that... every day England's greatest comic leaves the country for good. <laughs> They've got a duty to their public. One but of the penalties of fame. <laughs> do me a favour. Come, William, our final press conference in England. There he is, there he is. That's him, the Prime Minister. Yeah, that's him, all right. Sonny Big must be on. Secret meeting in Washington. He's not supposed to meet Ike till next month. Oh, no. uh, hold it, sir. Could we ask a few questions? Certainly, my good man. <laughs> Far away, as I believe they say in your country. <laughs> Are you going to America for some more money, sir? Of course I am. I'm no mug. <laughs> I know which side of the Atlantic my bread's buttered on. Uh, will you be seeing President Eisenhower while you're away, sir? I hadn't thought about it. I was really going to have a look at Marilyn Monroe. But I... <laughs> 
I wouldn't be at all surprised if I get asked to the White House to slosh a few golf balls around with him. You know, it is. Uh, you, of course, knew President Eisenhower from way back during the war. Did I? Oh, yes, I remember, yes. He stopped by our trench once and threw some chewing gum down on us, yes. <laughs> can you tell us specifically why you are going to America? Yes, I can. I'm glad you asked that. It's because I'm fed up with this country. I'm getting out. <laughs> I advise you to do the same. <laughs> you haven't got a chance here. Not a chance. You haven't got a chance of getting on unless you go to work. <laughs> Sir, how long will you be staying in America? For good. I'm not coming back here. <laughs> You're not coming back. Does the government know about this, sir? Well, I don't suppose so. What's it got to do with them? They, <laughs> they won't even miss me. But, but if you're not coming back, who will be taking your place as number one? Oh, there's plenty of good lads coming up, you know. Well, here, I was a bit of a strictly off the record. Jimmy Edwards is the one, I think. <laughs> Gee, I gotta get to a... Late extra, read all about it. Prime Minister resigns. Jimmy Edwards asked to form a new government. <laughs> members of the opposition that Mr. Macmillan is in fact in the country and that furthermore we have no intention of asking Professor Jimmy Edwards to become Prime Minister. He'd do a lot better than you lot. Resign! <laughs> General election boots for women! Oh shut up! <laughs> Well, that's the first hurdle over. We got you out of England. Now we've got to get you into America. Use the same passports? No, no, no. It's somehow I think they've tumbled by now that you're not Adolf McMillan and Selwyn Lloyd. I bet a pound of a penny is a ton of coppers in Washington waiting to nick you the minute you step off the plane. So what do we do now? So now you cop hold of another two passports. Here, put these two uniforms on. And there we are. General Franco and Prince Rainier. <laughs> A bungus moustache on. Oh, no, Sid. We'll never get away with it. No one will believe that tub is Prince Rainier. Good afternoon, Your Highness. Welcome aboard. How's Grace? Nicely, thank you. <laughs> well, there you are, you see. She was fooled. If she was the air hostess, she'd know Franco and Rainier weren't on this plane. Ah, oh, well, she's a... Special kind of air hostess. What do you mean? Bayswater Bertha, one of my customers. <laughs> How many people on this plane are you trying to get out of the country? Only one more. Him. Good evening. <laughs> I'm not surprised he's got to go. <laughs> Welcome aboard, everybody. I'm the pilot. Parachute! <laughs> Look. Look, Sid, Sid. Sid, a joke's a joke, but substituting the pilot is, shall we say, a, a trifle foolhardy. I'm oh, sorry to bother you all. Does anyone know how to drive a plane? <laughs> you don't know? No. <laughs> well, how did you get it up here? Well, I've been thinking about that ever since we took off. <laughs> I wish I knew, because it would give me an inkling how to get it down. No, oh, come on now. You must have some idea how you moved it. Surely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Planes just don't take off by themselves. Oh, no, no, honest, no. No, I don't know. I was just sitting in the cabin idly doing my knitting. <laughs> I, I thought... Pulled a few levers, and all of a sudden, whoosh! <laughs> and he was up here. I know, I was still on the ladder getting in. <laughs> yeah, so here we are. 
One big happy family. <laughs> Who's happy? We won't be up here forever. We'll run out of petrol soon and then we'll have to go. <laughs> you go and look on the bright side, you know. This is Sid's fault. Well, I'm glad he's here too. <laughs> Poetic justice. Hoisted with his own... What's it? <laughs> he's in it with us. Sid? Sid! Where's Sid? Are you looking for the gentleman who just jumped out with a parachute? <laughs> Look, you've got to get this plane down safely. I'm... I'm Prince Rainier, you know. And I'm General Franco. Oh, no, stop messing about. <laughs> you're Tony Hancock and you're Bill Kerr. I recognise those voices anywhere. I listen to your radio show every week. Oh? Oh, do you like it? No, I think it's rotten. <laughs> All except that bloke with the funny voice. <laughs> He's a scream, isn't he? <laughs> oh, he has me in stitches. <laughs> you know, there are actually people like that. <laughs> Get away. No, no. There are honest, I met some. You want to hang on to him? The only thing in the program, he has me on the floor. So I lie if you don't get this plane down. Oh, you don't be like that. These little things are just tend to try us. Hello? What? The engines have stopped. Mm, yes, I thought they would. <laughs> Fasten your safety belts, please. Why? Well, you never know, it might help. <laughs> Two different worlds, we live in two different worlds. I know. Well, don't just stand there singing and moaning to yourself, <laughs> muttering. <laughs> get in the cabin and get the wheels down. I don't know how to. Well, make a pancake. <laughs> I haven't got any jam. <laughs> You may not be an angel, but angels are so few. There'll be a few more in a minute. <laughs> hey, look, we're diving. We're going into a nose dive. You know, I thought we were. Either that or I've got one leg shorter than the other. <laughs> look, we're done for. We're out of control. No, it's all right. We're saved. How? Look, there's land down there. We're saved. Have you stopped to think what happens when we hit it? We all get out and have a walk round. <laughs> oh well. Cheerio, Bill. Cheerio, Tub. Eyes down for a full house. <laughs> Oh, good evening. Good evening. Well, it's nice to be here. <laughs> Just as well, because they wouldn't let me in anywhere on earth. What a shame. Never mind. You're all right now. Name? Hancock. Tony Hancock. Have you tried the other place? <laughs> now, don't you start. I had enough of that down there. I demand my rights. Here I am, and here I stay. I'm not without influence, you know. Well, neither are we. Oh, I don't doubt that for one moment. I think I'm enough. Oh, 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 oh. This has been Hancock's Half Hour, starring Tony Hancock, with Sidney James, Bill Kerr, Hattie Jakes, and Kenny Williams. Theme and incidental music composed and conducted by Wally Stock. Show written by Alan Simpson and Ray Gordon. The program which was recorded was produced by Dennis Main Wilson. <laughs>